Hi everyone, it's Molly. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here. I am working on a two foot by four foot, two of them commission. So I had been putting it off until I had enough space in my garage and it's finally time. I just need to get it done. I miss working on big canvases, honestly. So the camera angles are gonna be a little bit different tonight. Um, I may even, uh, depending on how long this takes me, I may speed up some parts, but I think what I'll do is maybe give you some tips and tricks and talk you through how to approach large canvas work. So, let's paint. Okay, so I wanted to take you through kind of how I approach large canvas work. And of course, I start by taping off the back, especially if it's a commission. I like the backs to be somewhat clean. If there are drips that go down the side, I'm totally okay with that, or down the back. It, it's okay, it's art. I've been to art shows and have seen the backs completely messy and people are selling them for thousands of dollars. It's okay, a real person made them. But for the most part, I like to try to tape it off, keep it somewhat clean. It's so funny, I'm even having a hard time stretching across to tape off the sides. You wanna make sure when you're buying large canvases at the store that you put them on the ground and make sure they're level in the store. If you buy them warped, it's very difficult. If you have a piece that's already warped, take it back, save your receipts. There I was just making sure the canvas was level on the table surface and on the stands that I'm using. My stands are finally here and I'm so excited. I shipped out to everyone that pre-ordered and I do have some left over and I've ordered more. So if anyone would like the stands for larger canvas work, they are in my Etsy store. I'm just painting the sides here, especially because the Prussian blue mixture that I used, it is semi-transparent. I added some black to make it more opaque um, because that's the color that they wanted. But I always try to paint my sides if I have a darker color that's not opaque. I realized a little bit in that I had painted a whole side blue instead of stopping, but that's okay. What I did afterwards was took the um, sky blue color and went ahead and just painted over the sides to make them fully opaque again. So no issues. If you mess up, it's paint. You can fix it, I promise. So now I'm just painting both sides. The prep work is really one of the most important parts and it's honestly kind of relaxing to me. I like this part of it. It's my time to kind of think about it, think about how I'm gonna go about the process and I really enjoy this part. So those are huge paint containers, 32 ounce paint containers that I made up. I cannot recommend enough. If you're working on a large canvas, make sure you have enough paint. You can always cover it with some press and seal if you don't use it all, but it's really hard to make the exact same consistency again. So I'm just using my blow dryer to spread out the paint at this point. And there's some bubbles, but I'll pop those with my torch. When I'm working on larger canvases, I do tend to hold my blow dryer almost perpendicular to the canvas, and I 
get really close to help push the paint where it's going. If you find that you're having an issue with that, try to change the angle of your blow dryer a little bit. Especially when working on large canvases, sometimes it's hard to get the paint to move. You really have to angle your blow dryer well and get close to the canvas to push it where it's going. I am still blowing on low, believe it or not. Now I'm just tilting. So when you're working on a big canvas, a lot of times the paint will pool in the center because you don't have a ton of braces there. If your canvas was a little saggy, all you had to do was either put a piece of cardboard underneath it, or you could wet the canvas and blow it dry before there's any paint on it and try to tighten it that way as well. Mine were pretty tight, so I didn't have to worry too much about it. I'm just popping all the air bubbles now with my tiny little torch. <laughs> So here comes the sky blue. And again, I didn't use all the sky blue that I had, but I used it for another painting afterwards. I don't think you can ever go wrong with having some leftover paints. I make some of my best paintings from leftovers. So same thing again here, I'm using my blow dryer and I'm really trying to push the paint where it's going. But if it's stopped moving and you've really got a good angle on it, you may just need to add some more paint. And that's what I do here. So it's okay. If you have to add more, just add a little bit from what you've made, blow that in, and it will all dry flat and mix together if your paints are mixed to the correct consistency. So here I'm just layering the colors. That first color was thalo blue. And now I've got the white. And I put the white next to the thalo blue because the two of them combine to make this beautiful blue color. And I really enjoy the way that they look. Next is a turquoise. And all these colors were selected by the person that did the commission. And she picked great colors. She actually picked it off of a pillow. That was my lime green, and that's gonna be really the focal point. And I'm just running my finger along as the paint is dripping down the side, just so that I don't have any raised areas when I'm finished. Now comes the magic. This is my silver. And this is Windsor & Newton silver mixed with a little bit of Soho silver. And that's what creates the beautiful cells that I get when I'm doing paint and water kind of blow dryer techniques, Dutch pours or air swipes. So here I actually had a little bit of trouble blowing. You have to think about what direction your blow dryer is going, especially when you're working on large canvases. You have to have a picture in your head of where you want the paint to go. So I started out blowing a little bit towards the center when I really should have been blowing kind of a little bit more up. But I corrected, if you saw there, right there, I corrected that little part to make it visually what I wanted. So I'm just covering a little bit more space there. And now I'm gonna blow that off the side. And I really love these side designs. They are just so interesting and they still leave a good amount of negative space there, which I do enjoy, but sometimes I just like big, bold pops of color. You can let me know what size canvas 
have you worked on? What's your largest canvas that you've worked on? I think mine's probably been a three foot by four foot diptych together. So these were two foot by four foot pieces. And I was so nervous. I've been doing this so long and I still get nervous when I paint commissions and when I'm working with big canvases. The paint's not cheap, the canvas isn't cheap, but like I always say, you can always work on it. You can even paint parts of it after it's dried if you don't like them. Well, here they are. I had to stand all the way back here to get them in frame. I'll go a little bit closer. Let me see if I can walk in, but I just wanted you to get the full effect and how actually tall they are. It's amazing. All right, let me come around and I'll show you some of the beautiful details. I'm about to varnish it. And down here, the green is really, really bright. It's beautiful. There's just the tiniest little bit of details everywhere, these little pops. Come back out, go to the next one. So there's this. That silver kind of shines. So I hope you found this informational. Is that a word? <laughs> and I really just wanted to kind of talk you through. You know, I'm such a mess. Look at all my stuff over there. I really just wanted to talk you through how I approach larger work because that's really my passion. It's much easier to try it on small things and show you the videos there, but oh, I really love working on large canvases. But I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye.